All right, welcome back to One Bills Live. Time for our fresh off-the-field interview brought to you by Austin Air, the official clean air provider of the Buffalo Bills. And joining us now is your starting left guard, Roger Saffold, coming off a week one victory, a resounding victory, 31-10. to 10. And, Roger, I know that's already in the rearview mirror for you as you begin to focus on the Titans. And my, my curiosity comes from here because, I mean, you know – those players there on that mm-hmm. Tennessee roster. Heck, you know, some of the guys on the L.A. roster, too. You've been around. Um, what can you lend to your offensive line teammates just from a personnel perspective? You know, tendencies, things that, they, you know, maybe something Jeffrey Simmons likes to do on a rundown. When it, you know what I mean? Those kinds of things. You don't have to share the secrets here, but right. is there something that you can lend to your teammates in that respect? Well, I think, that, you know, the older that you get in this game, you know, you're able to kind of broaden your perspective a little bit. So I'm seeing a lot more and taking a lot more in than, than normal. So I, I've really seen, like, you know, guys go to rushes um, in the pass protection. I kind of know how guys play it. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I know exactly how, like, who they're looking at is who they're pretty much going to be judging their, their run game after. Um, and that particularly helps a lot in, like, double team situations, yeah. things like that. Um, you know, their go-to moves off of uh, play action. Um, so just knowing the personnel, and, and especially since I was there last year, I think I got more to give them than I did with the, the Rams, even though I know a lot of those guys yeah. and, I've, and mm-hmm. I've been pretty close to those guys. So, um, you know, as much as I can give them, in order to get them ready for this game. Because, you know, we have just a huge physical game uh, on Monday. Yeah, you can give us some conjecture, too. What's it going to be like for the Titans this week getting ready for the Bills? I mean, this is a team in a close, tight-knit game. You were with the Titans last year in the in the game in Tennessee. Mm-hmm. You went through that whole season as the one seed and, and had a disappointing end to it. What's the vibe going to be like in Tennessee getting ready for this game in Buffalo? Um, well, I, I'll just say this right off the bat. Rabel's always already shown them a ton of tape with us. Um, they, they're, they're really well coached. Um, you know, they're, they're a very physical team. Uh, you know, I hate to say this, but when it comes to teams that, you know, they're supposed to win, they usually have trouble. It kind of goes the distance and doesn't necessarily go in their way. But when they're de- challenged with, like, you know, a really, really good team, you know, they bring out their best ball. Yeah. So. You know, I'm not expecting to see, you know, kind of the mishaps that happened last game. I expect to see, you know, uh, the best shot that they have to offer. And, and we need to nullify that and nullify it early because they're just, uh, their confidence just continues to roll on throughout the game. How was communication up front last week? Because, you know, first time, real bullets, all that stuff. There didn't seem to be many mental errors, if any at all. Execution looked pretty good, like start to finish in the game for you guys offensively. How'd that all work up front in terms of communication and everything, pre-snap, post-snap? I think it just comes with being prepared. Uh, you know, uh, Cromer has done a great job of getting us ready, getting us ready for a bunch of different looks. I mean, we had a great game, a great first game against so many different fronts, you know, which you normally don't go through right. uh, at the beginning of the season. Uh, for us to be able to kind of like work through that and everything was not perfect. I mean, there was a couple of indiscrepancies here and there, but the fact that we were able to go back to the sideline judge it off of that, not think too much into it, and then just kind of work together to kind of get better as the game went on. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, we, we were definitely satisfied with the results. You came into this season, and you, you don't know a Bills offensive coordinator other than Ken Dorsey. Give us your, the take and what Josh said and what they've talked about, the play selection. We've heard that, you know, it was really smooth. He called it out real early in the play clock. He, they got a chance to get to the line once in a while. Give, you guys were breaking the huddle like yeah, 22 seconds, you 23 were giving, seconds. You were giving, him, giving Josh a chance, to even Ken Dorsey, a chance to look at the defense before the ball snapped and before the play clock hits 15, he's called the play after he sees the defense. All that stuff seemed to go really smooth. Is that the take you get and the vibe you get from the guys uh, who talk to him? Absolutely. Uh, you know, uh, Dorsey being a quarterback, I'm sure that he wish he could throw the ball every single play. <laughs> but, you know, him being able to filter in there and throw in some runs, making sure that we're two-dimensional, guys doing their fundamentals, and, and our wide receivers doing a great job of reading those coverages, put us in great positions in that game. I mean, you saw you saw Stefan blowing the top off of the defense. I mean, you've seen great play calls with uh, the around showing Gabe blocking for just a quick second and then able to get out. Uh, you know, just the, the play selection has been great. And, uh, you know, we're always on the attack, which I love because Dorsey is such a great competitor, you know, which a lot of people don't see. 
Um, but, you know, because of that competition that, you know, that he loves, you know, we're always just continuing to attack and continuing to push down the field. It was interesting for us to see Reggie Gilliam in a pretty expand, I shouldn't say expanded role, but he got more work than we had really seen from him last season, maybe even the season before that. And to see him kind of working as a fullback, even as a move tight end a little bit. You guys had some 21 personnel and ran out of it pretty well. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't want to call it an extra dimension to the offense because it's just one game, and who knows? Ken Dorsey might have it completely different this week. But seeing Reggie step up and and fill that role capably, um, I got to imagine it's a good thing because it makes you – more of a varied offense if he can step in and execute in those situations for Coach Dorsey. Oh, 100%. You know, we joke about it, me and Reggie do, but just about, you know, sometimes he's got to go into the huddle and be like, okay, who am I? What, what, what position <laughs> am I playing right now so I can block this play effectively mm-hmm. or run the ball or catch the ball, whatever he does. But, you know, he's definitely earned his contract. Mm-hmm. I mean, we've seen uh, even crazier looks throughout the preseason where he's had to play even more different dimensions. So, I mean, uh, I'm really proud of the way that he's responded to that, and practice does make perfect because he's been doing this consistently, yeah. and he's starting to to really get comfortable where he is. What's the the offensive guys saying about you know the interceptions they had? You know, with Isaiah um, McKenzie was in his hands, out of his hands, and the two running backs got it chopped out of their their hands as well. How are they handling those? And and that's got to be like the one thing that well, you didn't punt the entire game. So it's got to be the one thing that you're thinking, okay, we got to do better. How are they handling that, particularly the young guys? Well, honestly, you know, when it comes to that first game, you know, it's the first time that we're all fully in there. Everybody's playing both sides of the ball. So, I mean, you're going to see those, you know, kind of kind of pains uh, in the first game. Now, luckily, we got to win, so it's not as bad. But there are also tons of things that we can learn uh, from that. So, you know, not fighting for extra yards in four minutes. One of those situations, you know, just, hey, let's just take it right here, keep the ball in our hands, keep it moving, um, you know, making sure that we have it high and tight and really see those ice outside lanes so that you don't even get into that position. And then just, you know, making sure that we're giving accurate throws and really attacking the ball with our hands. I mean, it, it's just all a part of it. So, you know, even though it was frustrating uh, to have those types of things happen, you know, I think that guys are just, you know, continuing to get accustomed to the season and, and, and will notify that. I know that – you know, the goal every week is to make the opponent one dimensional, um, particularly for your defense. But you guys got to really get up on the Titans to convince Mike Vrabel to stop running the football. Like 10 nothing, he doesn't blink. He's still running the ball. You know, 13 nothing, he may not even blink right. uh, and still want to run the ball. How far up do you got to get on the Titans to convince Mike Vrabel to consider something else besides riding Derek? Well, I mean, you you know, I, I know that the Titans don't want to be one dimensional one dimensional when it comes to running the uh, to to throwing the ball. Yeah. Uh, but you know, if you took away that run game, you're pretty much taking away you know who they are. Right. Um. And and you know, if it's first, second, third quarter, you know, they don't want to necessarily take that away. Right. So things have to be really out of hand before they start becoming one dimensional like that. When you get into this game, I mean, certainly. Um, when you come up to Buffalo and you come from Tennessee, you got to, the schedule comes out and it's like, yes, sir, it's Monday night football and, you know, you got some guys that you, you got some love and respect for down there, right? So yeah. But you still, too, I mean, I did the same thing. A lot of motivation for you personally coming into this game. Absolutely. You know, I mean, uh, you know, you never want to go down the road that, you know, I, I kind of had to go to, which, you know, it's tough decisions for every team. So, of course, I never take any of that personally. But, um, you know, going against the Rams, uh, my, my first team, now going against the Titans, you know, after that, I mean, it's just, you know, kind of like it was almost built for me, right? Um, <laughs> back to back. Yeah, back to back like that. But, you know, uh, like I said, because I have so much respect for their guys, because I know the identity of the team, because I know how these guys play, that's all the motivation I need. I know that this is going to be a physical game. Uh, I know there's going to be some big collisions. And I know that we're really going to have to be efficient um, up and down the field in order to, you know, put them in that one dimension and then really start attacking. It kind of makes you grateful. you got a couple extra days between these two games. Um, to kind of let the body heal up a few extra right. days because you know you're going to be mashing on Monday oh, yeah. night. So what do you do in with that extra time? Are you just feet up when you can and just, you know, rest it up? And, like, what are some of the techniques you use, especially as a veteran player, when you have the extra time to get the body? I know it's early in the season. This isn't week 15, 
But right. what, what are some of the techniques you kind of subscribe to to kind of keep your body right when, you, when you're afforded extra time like this? Uh, what you really want to do is you just want to sit there, right? You don't want to do anything. <laughs> you just want to relax the entire time. But, of course, you know, they say it's better to kind of get up and move around. Move the blood around. Yeah, yeah, move the blood around a little bit, which, you know, is something that I definitely do. I always love to come in during one of those off days and get a little workout in. Uh, you know, sweat, you know, it really does help, help get rid of lactic acid, all Push those types out, of yeah. things. And then, you know, just going through my routine during the week. You know, I do a lot of hot tub, cold tub, Epsom salt baths, use boots, all types of things. So um, that was some good good amount of sleep, which I'm very thankful for the schedule that we have on this team. Right. Um, you know, I'm always able to get a good amount of sleep. So uh, it, it, those those all pay dividends throughout the season. And, you know, if you don't take care of them now, then, you know, week right. six, I'm yeah. going to be – broken down what is there about if you've noticed anything certainly the rams were different than tennessee and you know tennessee's different than buffalo rams are different than buffalo what about buffalo's process here that gives you guys a chance i mean they've been really healthy and we we can only like guess at maybe the reason and, and there's no you know maybe there's no difference it's just dumb luck who knows but they have stayed healthier and what do you notice about their process that may lead to that uh, you know, I mean, we we do we work tirelessly over here to try to make sure we take care of guys' bodies, which I know both other teams that I played for try to do as well. Um, you know, with the with the data that they pick up, mm -hmm. um, they really use that. Guys having conversations with you know the trainer, head coach, and the strength coach, something that both all three of the teams that I played for have. But I think that just with this team, I think you know the way that we we practice. Um, the schedules that we have, we come in just a little bit later, you know, that gives guys time to really get some good rest in. And then just the way that, you know, everything is structured from the workouts to just, you know, how much availability that we have in the training yeah. room, because the training room is, is really state of the art. Um, it, it really puts us in a great position. And plus, I mean, we were just talking about it, you know, it's really hard to recover from that heat in Tennessee, you know, sometimes. So it's like, you know, the recovery week after week, can be a grind on you practicing in that humidity and, and heat yeah. week in and week out. Yeah, it drains you for sure. You ready for that Monday night atmosphere? You've played here before, right? On I have. I have played here before, and I've always seen, uh, you know, a great, a great crowd. And this is before, uh, this is years before when I was still on the Rams. So um, I'm definitely excited to be on the, <laughs> the good guy side of this one. one yeah. um, to be on the good guy side of this one for, for the first home game to be yeah. a Monday night football game. You know, biggest thing for me, and I know uh, uh, with my line, it's like, all right, let's just keep our emotions in check because, yeah. you know, they can run crazy, and that's when, you know, the kind of mistakes kind of start. So we're just going to try to be not too high, not too low, and yeah. just continue. You might want to start with the guy at number 17 on your team. You might peel him off the season. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's done better <laughs> he's about one of the guys it. Yeah. To, he's one of the first guys to say it. Yeah. yeah. He, which, he, which is unbelievable. Saying it's one thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Roger, not, we, don't have, yeah, we don't have to tell yeah, you he's hyper competitive, right? Thanks for coming in, man. Appreciate you. Just fresh off the practice field. Appreciate you coming in. Thanks for spending a couple of minutes with us. Yeah. All right, no problem at all. Thank you, guys. Yeah.